In episode 1 of my takoyaki series, I took you to Osaka to eat the best takoyaki in Japan. But there's a problem with that statement. Here in episode 2, we're gonna find out. And we're back in the Maple Kitchen where I'm gonna show you how to make the real best takoyaki in all of Japan. And like my friend James Makinson likes to say, Let's get started. Hi and welcome to the show everybody. Thanks for showing up and I know you're here today because you want to learn how to make a real Osaka takoyaki and I've got a real humdinger of an episode today for you because the Japanese secrets I'm going to reveal today are f***ing gold. Yay! Yay! There's an entire backstory to the takoyaki I'm going to teach you how to make today and in fact it's even better than Osaka's. No kidding. Yeah and I'll talk more about that while I'm cooking. Let's go. All right, folks. First of all, let's cut our negi. There you go, straight from my garden. Now, it's perfectly fine to use supermarket negi, but hey, today we're aiming to beat Osaka. So that means my own homegrown. These things are much more intense in flavor and aroma. And just cut them like this. Now, if you really care about being official, if you work in a sushi place, yeah, that'll be like four millimeters. I don't really care. Go for five, go for three. I don't give a shit. So there you go, about that size. Okay? So, you know how they say that the best takoyaki in the world is from Osaka? I have heard that. They say this? Yeah. And technically it's true. But technically. Technically is the, the sticking point. That's the, the catch. I used to live 100 kilometers west of Osaka in a place called Himeji mm -hmm. and honestly in my opinion Himeji had better takoyaki. Oh really? Yeah. Why is that? Um, I just discovered it by experience. You know I ate Himeji takoyaki for years and then I went to Osaka and I tried it and it was good but I remember thinking in the moment hey this is actually better in Himeji mm. because in Himeji there was a little tiny hole in the wall run by a little grandma and she made the best takoyaki I've ever Aww. tasted. Like, you, nobody could beat her. It was crispy on the outside. It was creamy and lava-like on the inside. And yeah, hers were just second to none. So after having hers, Osaka felt like, you know, second best. Aww. But you know, the next time I went back to Japan, she had retired, the shop was gone, and her takoyaki just are not to be had anymore. So would you say that this is closer to the Himeji? That's the Oyaki? thing. I, I make it the way she makes it. Mm, yeah. So we're getting real authentic. We're, we're getting today. something that's actually better than Osaka. Mm. Osaka is by default the best, but they're not really the best it can be. Mm -hmm. So tonight we're having something that is even better than what they have in Osaka. Eating good tonight. We are. Green onions chopped up. Look at the size of this thing. Look how long this is. Beautiful, beautiful. Compared to yours, which are massive, and they're so Well, I don't know if they're, they're, they're long, but they lack girth. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about octopus. All right, what about the octopus? All right, um, I was losing a lot of money because I was going out of my way to get real Japanese octopus the whole time, which is like so expensive. Mm. And I recently discovered Spanish octopus is actually better for this. No kidding. Yeah, this is from Spain and it's more tender. Mm. So save your money and have a better takoyaki. Prepare an octopus like this. They might even call it taco sashimi, but it's not raw. It's actually cooked already. They boil it at the fishery. If it were raw, you'd know because it'd be all slimy and it wouldn't be like this color. Cut this into roughly one centimeter squares like that. Okay, taco cubes. Beni shoga. Mm. Okay, uh, this is pickled Japanese red ginger and it comes in strips like this. Do not confuse this with Japanese shaved ginger that they serve with sushi because you cannot substitute that for this. Oh, okay. okay you specifically different. have to get this kind of ginger. Make sure your hands are clean first, but just grab it and squeeze. Oh, squeeze yeah. out all that extra fluid. Just cut it up into little nubbins. There you go. Getting little little nubbins like that, okay? Okay, Benny Shoga. Know what I heard? What do you hear? Octopuses have like nine brains. Are you serious? Yeah, they have nine brains, and the main one is in their crotch. No way. I'm serious. They do their main thinking with their crotch. Sounds like you. <laughs> when I was 14, hell yeah, I was. <laughs> 14 year old me was an octopus. <laughs> 
Yeah. All right, so we got our mise en place done. Let's move on to the dry ingredients. Japanese hakuriki ko. Mm. I realize a lot of you out there probably don't have access to this. This is Japanese cake flour. Oh. Yep. If you want to use regular Western cake flour, you're perfectly free to do so. It should turn out just as well. Don't use pizza flour ah! or all-purpose flour or bread flour. I mean, you can. It won't turn out as well, though. It'll still be delicious. I've done it even in a pinch, but on the regular, no, I wouldn't do it. At least get cake flour, guys. What's the difference between cake flour and regular flour? Glad you asked. It's protein content. Oh. Yeah, so it'll be fluffier. Like you want that fluffy, in a cake you want it fluffy. On the inside of a takoyaki, you want it to be like lava. You don't want it to have a chew, like mm. a hard European bread, right? I see, so, so this will reduce the amount of chewiness of our takoyaki. That's the goal. Mm. This is only like, uh, I think, seven or eight percent protein, whereas something like a pizza flour would be up to 13 percent protein. Oh wow, so significantly yeah. less. Well, totally, you can totally feel it in your mouth, yeah. okay? Flour choice matters. 250 of this good stuff, we eight grams of this good stuff. This is dashi. This is the stock. Okay? Oh, okay. And you could make it yourself from this stuff. This is basically what it's made from. Okay, you can see all the dried flakes in there, shaved fish flakes. But that's a pain in the ass. Ninety-nine percent of all the grandmas and moms out there in every kitchen I saw in Japan just use the powdered stuff. Mm. It's good enough. It's really Japanese. It's very Japanese behavior to do it. You're not cheating by doing it. Whee! 1,050 grams of cold water. That's oddly specific. I've tried it with different ratios and that's the number I've come to like best for the way this all works. Try it at home and change it if you want, but I can almost guarantee you will come back to 1,050 grams. And how much is that in milliliters? Because I'm Canadian. Same. Same? Grams and milliliters are both metric, dude. What? Are they? Yeah. I've never measured Americans water in grams. Yeah, well, it's it's still I find it easier just to convert everything into grams. How much is it in because cups then? Cups of oh, <laughs> I have I don't know. Anyway, 1050 grams of cold water. Here we go. We 10 grams of Japanese soy sauce. Don't use Chinese soy sauce for this. No, Chinese soy sauce tastes so different. It's it's not wrong for Chinese food, but for something like this, Japanese food it doesn't match. Trust me, guys. One single large egg. <laughs> And there's a trick to this. You should beat the egg first before you mix it with the rest of the batter. Why is that? Because if you don't, it won't integrate well. Okay, and you're gonna notice that there are a lot of little lumps on top floating around. Mm -hmm. No big deal, okay? You don't have to mix this too, too much. In fact, I'm gonna tell you, don't mix it too, too much. How do I get rid of the little bumps? They then? will melt on their own over time. If you mix it too much, you're gonna build up gluten and then you're gonna get that chewiness that you don't want. Okay, that's about good enough. It's, there's lumps all over the place. Leave it, they will melt later. A few moments later. All right, some time has gone by. You can see most of the lumps have melted away, mm -hmm. right? And it's a really watery batter. We say in Japanese, shaba shaba. Ah, uh, yeah, this is very shaba shaba. Shaba shaba is this kind of watery batter. I just want to talk about this right now before I start cooking because when I'm cooking, I won't have time to explain. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that you may or may not know. It's called, oh, look, it says fried wheat flour. It's tempura bits. Oh. In, in Japanese, we call it tenkasu. All right. And you can go plain or you can go fancy like I did tonight and I got the kind with extra squid bits in it. Oh wow, what does which that do? Adds more crunch and more flavor. And plus this is a very famous brand. Not sponsored. Please sponsor us. We no. need money on the Maple I, Cook I, channel. No, I'm just doing this for fun. I don't want to get sponsored anymore. I just anybody like I don't want to be anybody's bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like except, I'm just except your wife. I'm just doing a hey. <laughs> we take turns. <laughs> She's got me a... Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so before we start, I just want to go into what this machine you have here is because I've, I haven't seen it before. It's a, a butane stove. When we're dealing with professional kitchens in Osaka that make the takoyaki, they have a, a dedicated gas line to come in to heat hundreds of takoyaki. Obviously, you're not going to have one of those in your house, right? Mm. So this is the next best thing that I've found and it runs on a can of butane. Fits into the machine like so. You lock it down like that. You just turn it. Ta-da! Yeah. And you get a flame. And so what about this thing? Ah, made by Iwatani. Again, this is not a sponsored video. It's just the best one I've found. If you guys have found a better one, leave me a comment. But 
this is for home use. The professional ones in Osaka will be like seasoned steel, mm. right? So there's a difference already there. But we don't need to season this at all. No, no, no. This is just like a nonstick pan. Mm. And it runs on this round flame. Now, what that means is that each individual pocket is going to heat up at slightly different temperature, which is not ideal. But we can deal with that. Keep watching to find out how. Medium fire is about where you want to be with this. You don't want to go too high on the heat either because you could end up burning them. How and long does it take in total for a takoyaki? You know, I've never timed it. But you'll realize it has a certain look when it's ready. All right, that feels about warm enough. So then we're gonna oil the pan. And properly, you should use peanut oil or rice bran oil. And we'll just, we're just gonna pretend that this is rice bran oil. Yeah, it's totally rice bran oil. No, it totally is, totally is. Great, so there you go. We've oiled the pan. And how do you know if the fire is too low? Because it'll take way too long to cook. Asian cooking is done by feel. So there you go. Just dump in enough to fill the little pockets. Then you show got negi. Obviously, taco. I actually messed this up. The taco should have gone in first. I'm sorry. Put the taco in first, folks. Smells like a Japanese restaurant. See, right I now. told you. Right. Tenkase. And this will give it an extra little crunch and some nice ika flavor. Ika is squid, by the way. Okay, and then we just separate them while it's still soft and wet. There are little lines, grid lines in the um, in the pan to help you to help you find your way. Okay, and we just kind of leave it and watch it. This is really forgiving. Okay, there's a couple ways you can do this. Guys in Osaka who do it for a living, they have it all timed out. Down to the millisecond. And they know exactly when it's time to turn it. And they can turn each one at a precise time and it turns out the way it turns out in the professional kitchen. Nobody expects you to do it like that. I don't even do it like that. Well, the way I do this is I continually turn it. Is it a bit more of a pain in the ass? Yes, it is. But it also guarantees you get a great result, okay? Mm. So this is how I do it, okay? And just stick it in like this and you pull. I'm a little early on this, so it's not quite, you can't really see, it's kind of taking shape, right? But not really, and that's perfectly fine. This doesn't require any kind of skilled hand, really. I'm just digging it and, and pushing it and turning it. Man, that smells good. That's so good, oh my gosh. It smells like Osaka in here right it now. It does. But later on in this video, I'll show you my own personal secret that nobody does in Osaka mm. to take the crispiness to the next level. See, you can tell right now, like I said, some are cooking faster than others, right? Stuff any wayward bits underneath into the pocket so that it becomes more and more like a little ball. Like this one I'm handling right now is much softer than this one over here. So what we do is we pull the we pull this one out, and we pull this one over there. And that's how we deal with it. And they do sell machines that are electric, like an electric kettle kind of idea, where the, the heat source is built into the, the cups. I don't like those as much. No. Why is that? They just, I don't know, it's harder to get a good result I find with those. Although to be perfectly honest with you, I'm using gas tonight, but when I'm in a rush, I often just put it on my stove top, my electric stove top, and it works just fine. Actually. Wow, it works on the electric stove It top does, though. but it it requires a slightly different technique, and I'm not going to teach that tonight. Oh, look at that one. Wow, yep. the yep. colors. Sure. See, they're coming along, right? I wish the viewers could smell how good it smells right now. It is, I, yeah, I gotta agree. Like, it smells amazing in here. <laughs> okay, so here's where I show you my little secret, my own personal little secret that they do not do in Osaka. If they see you do this in Osaka, they're gonna cry sacrilege, okay? So optional. If you don't wanna do the next thing I'm gonna show you, don't do it. But I'm gonna add a little bit more oil oh. to crisp it up. Wow. There you go. And that's gonna create a nice crispy shell on the outside. See the steam popping out of there? Oh yeah. There will be bubbles and steam. You know the inside is pretty much cooked at that point. I could pull these off now if I wanted. I'm just waiting for it to get to a golden brownness of my liking. All right, I think we're done. Cut the heat. And now let's plate them. All right. Wow, it's so gooey. Now, there is a standard way to dress these, but when you're in Osaka, they have about 12 or 14 different styles. I'm not gonna do them in 15 or 14 different ways, all right? I'm just gonna do three different styles for you, just like I showed you in part one of the video. Lomiyaki sauce. And they do make dedicated takoyaki sauce. I don't think it's necessary. It tastes basically identical. I prefer to brush it on. Japanese cupid mayonnaise. And you just kind of do this aesthetic. Just kind of Bob Ross into it. Katsobushi. These are those fish flakes I told you about. 
got almost, almost a nutty flavor. Aonori. Mm. Okay, this is a type of Japanese seaweed that has a very peculiar flavor. Do not substitute other kinds of seaweed. It has to be aonori. Sometimes it's called aosa, like this one is. Okay? Mm -hmm. It has to be this. Not nori, not wakame, alright? Not kombu. It has to be aonori. Oh, with that. Alright, so we're gonna do some of my homemade ponzu for the next flavor. With the cutest bowl you've ever seen oh, in your so life. Oh, that's so cute. And then the ones that go with ponzu, we're gonna put some baby on it. French fleur de sel. Mm. Okay, this is that expensive salt. And you can see it's got these big flakes on it, and this will produce a nicer, a nicer mouthfeel. This big grain salt is always nice around the tongue. Kizami nori. And you just put this on top of like this. Here you go, my friend. Eat and enjoy! Wow. You're gonna love it. I just know oh you God, are. They look so hot though. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, be careful. Wow. You like it? Oh my God, it's so good! <laughs> yes, yes, wow. yes! Just so you know, anyone who's watching... I like, don't like takoyaki yeah. usually. <laughs> She said that she didn't like it when she went to Osaka. So tonight was gonna be a real challenge for me. Mm. But this actually, which Ooh. one did you eat? Oh, this, you're eating the classic. Okay. I had the classic first, but this is so good. Oh, you had the the, the salt and mm. okay. It's it's like the salt is a, such a unique taste because you can taste it on your tongue, but with the nori, it like complements itself. It oh my god, the taco is so soft as well. Oh good, good. Mm. See, yeah, that Spanish taco is something else. It's actually really good because it's not as rubbery as like the Japanese one. No. Nope. I'm gonna try the last one. Yes. Ponzu. Dip it in the ponzu. This is the ponzu you made. This is the ponzu that I wow, made. First yeah. time trying the ponzu as well. Hi, Takimas. Mm. <laughs> Look at that mm. face. Look at that <laughs> face. <laughs> I think that's my favorite. Oh really? I'm Your glad you. Ponzu is so good. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you know what real ponzu tastes like from Japan, yeah. right? And this is this beats this it. Is yeah, this is actually better than authentic. I, <laughs> I think, knew to you'd myself. like it. Wow, it's got So there you go, folks. Yeah. The classic, the salt and shredded seaweed, and the ponzu and negi. Make it at home. Eleven out of ten. <laughs> Yay! Eleven out of ten. They approve. They there approve. you go. <laughs> The adventure continues in future episodes, folks, so don't forget to like and subscribe so you won't miss me taking you to Japan's favorite gyudon restaurants.